Hey, this is a tutorial on how to set up a sprite for a kind of Commodore 64 type workflow. Now, I never thought that a sprite was designed in such a way to be versatile that much. I thought maybe there was just a few color palettes that related to old school systems and that was it. But this a sprite is so underestimated. I'm just going to show you how to set this up. Now, I'm going to go for a new file. And I've already set the width and the height here. Uh, so it's 160 pixels by 200. Now you might think this is a portrait format, but as soon as you put this double pixel wide on two by one, everything just works the way you'd expect. I've chose uh, index color just so that I can choose the correct palette. And let's check this out. So I'm going to go up here and choose the Commodore 64 palette. I'll just load that in and just click here. So I've got the palette. It might not be perfect. You can always make little adjustments and I'll show you how to do that. But we've got the, the right pixel ratio here. Just make sure you're on one pixel if that's all you want. And you can see it's the little double brick there. So that's going to work perfect. You can, if you want, put an 8x8 grid in there as well. So you could even go into the preferences and go to grid and change this to eight by eight, but actually it's gonna be four by eight. So if I click apply and okay, we should actually see the background change. Let me just check that again. Uh, I think it might be background instead actually. So I'm gonna change that to eight by eight and apply that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's not gonna show me the, the actual division, but because I did go in there and mess around with the grid. And I don't think the grid's actually on, so let's see if we can get. So we've got that grid, that's also cool. And I guess I could get this grid as well. Uh, okay, let's change that to eight by eight. Okay, let's go back to that because it looks like it should be four by eight. Uh, grid grid settings, so width 4 by 8, and there we go, we're set up. The only thing that's odd is the checker pattern is double wide, but that doesn't bother me at all. Now we've got our little 8 by 8 blocks, um, and we can work away with that. So I'm just going to use the eraser here, you can even use the tablet, which is great. Um, so the coolest thing that I found out today is the, the gradients work really nicely. Um, that's a blur tool, so it's the fill and then gradient. And you're thinking to yourself, well, it's not going to do dithering all that well, uh, but it really does. And I'm just going to minimize this so I can get some good screen space there. Okay, so no dithering, basically, yeah, it does what you think. So you right click for one color and left click for another. Now we don't want a transparent background. Let me just make sure color mode is an indexed, more options. I don't want to have a transparent color. Um, I don't want the background to be transparent. So let's just try, I'm going to try a new document again. I don't want transparent, so background I'm going to make as black. Okay. That's cool, and now, so right click and left click. Let me just change that back to the Commodore 64. So I've loaded that in, and now I can make a gradient between those two tones. And you see, immediately it starts to make kind of banding, and it chooses the best colors that it thinks would be good for that setup. But if I change this to dithering, you can see I can undo that and actually get the pixels looking right. I can even use shift to lock that to, I think it's certain degrees, like 15 degrees, uh, something like that. I can see some angle snapping down the bottom when I do that, but uh, let me just change that to something else like bare 4x4. Four four. Let's go red to yellow. Okay, it's not really choosing this orange color in between, so I might just see if I can force it.
by changing this, making it a little bit brighter. So left click, right click. Yeah, it's not quite doing that. And it's also doing some tolerance stuff. I just want to overlap everything. But you can see, you can make some really nice looking gradients. And yeah, it just it's really cool. I never thought about using a sprite for this type of thing. But uh, just today when I was using it, I was getting these kind of happy accidents happening and, and it was just, it was cool. Um, but you could even change the opacity, but I don't know what that'll do. So it still chooses like good colors and it's still sticking to the palette. It's not trying to make any new pa uh, colors or anything like that. And it's doing its best based on the opacity and everything. Uh, so it's really good. Uh, just I'm kind of not sure how to use this at all for the, the gradient. Let's see, it should be, so it's a gradient going between the two tones as far as I know and I guess there's not much option with that to go from uh, nothing to something. Mm, maybe you could put the alpha down. Okay, and yeah, it keeps bringing in this yellow tone for some reason. Uh, probably because alpha is not supported. Add a background to the palette. But yeah, you can kind of do gradients here. Uh, yeah, I've just been messing around with it, but I think it's pretty cool what you can do with it. Uh, we can use layers as well, new layer, and go for a blue. So yeah, it completely replaces the layers there. You can even do like a circle gradient. And it would be good if it went from one tone to the other. I think that might do it. That looks to be good. So if the background color basically is here, so I right clicked on this one, then it can basically work between two tones. Oh, I just lost it there. I think it's foolproof. It looks like you can also use spacebar uh, once you've made your size to move this around, which is really cool. Uh, so add a new layer. I'm gonna drag one of these out and then use spacebar. Uh, Doing the best job of it. Let's try another one of these, eight by eight. Yeah, for some reason it keeps making the the background completely uh, solid, but so far it's been it's been pretty good. Let me just see if I can get it to and work out why it's doing this. So if that was yellow, yeah, it's basically using that as the background. Hmm. Let's do another layer. Just wonder what's going on. New layer. Let's choose this grey. And yes, yeah, constantly choosing blue. You can see if I do something like that. I guess I could use a layer and then uh, magic, magic wand away this colour. Uh, if I have the contiguous off and then I can delete that and oops, turn other layers on. So that's pretty handy for adding in little gradients and stuff like that and you see it just works quite well. So I recommend any Commodore artists out there giving this a go. You might be used to the zooming into the grid and having your grid switched on and and um you know, working in different sections and maybe using Photoshop or whatever, but uh, this seems pretty cool for the gradient side, for sure. I quite like uh, gradients and making cool looking skies and stuff. Uh, so you could have that, and then I guess, so left, that would be the right color, and this would be the left color, another gradient there. That just looks really cool. And then I guess you make that one your left color, that one your right color, and there you go. You've got a really nice looking gradient. 
like that and uh, I guess once you're happy you can bring that into some processor to make sure that you're mapping correctly all these blocks like ganged2 is pretty good for that and I guess I would just make that the right color yeah and I've got a nice gradient sky I make a new layer it's making a little kind of sunset effect now so new layer and I can make some nice shape. In fact, I'll even do the circle one. Yes, it's going to do it wrong to start with, but all I need to do is just get the size sort of right. I can use space to move that around anyway. Uh, magic wand away the purple there, and then I use the move tool to move that in space, and that looks pretty sweet. So loads of control with this, um, way better than my blip paint tool by far. There's loads of things that you know I wouldn't be able to do here, um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, you can merge all these layers together, uh, merge visible, flat invisible, and then you know carry on making cool stuff. So I'd love to see what you guys make of using a sprite to do that kind of art and not just that it does all your other type of stuff look at all these you get the vic 20 palette you've got the plus four palette um all sorts of retro consoles and custom palettes here you set everything up the way you want you've got these pixel gradients to help you out to make good looking pixel art so definitely recommend it Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.